Good morning, everyone. I guess I'm competing against the donuts outside, so it's, um, it's a very tough uh, uh, competition. But uh, thanks for being here. Very excited to, to, to be here today. So uh, <coughs> let's get started. I travel all the time, and, uh, and I love spending time with my clients. And uh, when I get them talking to me about BAU business are usual, kind of all the alarms come to me. Because I think we can say that uh, uh, business today is, is everything but, but usual. So many changes, which I'll try to, uh, to, explain, to explain today. Uh, actually, it's probably good to, to put a bit of a context about uh, what's, uh, uh, what's the situation and, uh, and why I'm saying that business is or should be kind of everything, anything but, but usual. Uh, eight, almost seven, eight out of the ten largest uh, companies uh, in the market are tech companies at, at the moment. And we can say that they are fast 50 times more efficient which, you know, if we break that down, that number, is kind of a bit scary, actually, to compete with a company that uh, uses one resource to do the same as, as what you do with 50 people, right? It's quite scary. Uh, companies where the cost of IT, every IT transaction is a seventh, and where the ratio of capital consumption uh, is a third, right? It sounds a bit scary. It sounds a bit like the future, right, is is out of control because if any of these companies decide at any point in time to get into your business, you're probably out. At least you will struggle. So I think what we will be talking today is about how to regain control and what is the role of both technoscience and trusted intelligence to regain back uh, control on your future. So <coughs> reality is that these companies are not stop. Everybody's under transformation, yeah? But it sounds like, it seems like the efforts uh, <coughs> are not working. Because by the time they finish a transformation program, the gap is even bigger. So it's not decreasing. The situation is getting worse. And time matters. Time is of essence now. We can say that data and technology are consolidating as a disruptive business driver. So let me explain a bit of why that gap is increasing and why a new paradigm is needed. Because with this paradigm, if we don't change the paradigm, this situation will get worse and worse. Now, not everything is about technology. So I'll talk about three main factors. Of course, I think the audience uh, of this event is more likely to you know, get into the details about technology. But I want to maybe uh, make a step back, and I'll talk about three things, operating model, culture, and technology. And I make a stop, and I'll come back to that in a moment, about the architecture of the future enterprises. right? Because under the concept of an enterprise, right? We are, uh, what we see is a massive simplicity on these technology companies versus extremely complex organizations. Under uh, an enterprise, I can say that there are hundreds or thousands of enterprises below that, which has an impact around speed. And as I said before, speed is of essence. It's like trying to, you know, with that heavy bag, uh, trying to get into a race or with the crutches. I think I would probably not do that, probably better play chess rather than anything else. But reality is that the concept of the enterprise, the architecture of the enterprise or traditional business need to change. The second uh, <coughs> element is around uh, technology, as I was saying. And I think uh, we need to talk about uh, distributed age technology versus the monolithic age uh, technology, where probably 95% of the market somehow is dealing with. What's the difference between gathering data, trusted data, from every single transaction and customer interaction and use that to learn by the second, versus organizations that don't learn anything? I mentioned before, uh, a gap in terms of efficiency of 50 times, yeah? 
The paradigm was wrong, and I will try to explain why, in our views, the paradigm was wrong. That separation in times and space between the operations, where the customer sits, etc., and the information, the analytics, the brain, that separation in time and space is no longer valid. Because that makes organization incapable of learning by the second. And that's massive legacy. So as I was saying before, <coughs> this, uh, um, uh, this approach has a huge impact in terms of efficiency, speed and efficiency. Now, we are um, very excited uh, about the strategic partnership that we have made with Stratio, because we are going to change the status quo. And we are committed with that. We strongly believe that we can do. Because at EY, what we do is transformation. But now, <coughs> we're bringing um, into, uh, we're joining efforts, and we are bringing probably the best technology we have seen in the market to change that status quo and to uh, help companies operate as Google does, as a same as if they had kind of this distributed technology. So let's see how we do that. Well, first I'm saying that, and I'm I'm fully confident that we will change the status quo because I mean at EY we are almost 300,000 people, and we have access to 200,000 clients. We can get anywhere. So <coughs> what's the, the value proposition that we are taking to the market today? Right. We believe that, uh, as I was saying before, we'll change the way companies leverage data in AI to regain back control uh, on their future. It was a bit, a bit of an intro, uh, <coughs> but and I mentioned the complexity of the architecture of the enterprises, as well as, uh, uh, as a point around why uh, companies are so slow, and also kind of that gap is becoming uh, bigger and bigger. And uh, uh, let me introduce two concepts. The concept of technoscience and trusted intelligence, because we believe this will be an act as the core of the future enterprise. We always talk about AI, right? And AI is kind of the headline, yeah? But the reality is that as the convergence of multiple technologies beyond AI and <coughs> the combination with science, what will shape the future? If you think about the architecture of the future, at least the way I see it, the architecture of a future enterprise will be fundamentally different as what it is today. And I think we need to talk about, for instance, just to put an example, the convergence of blockchain and AI. And I can see the future architecture of an enterprise with ledgers of blockchain around finance, around operations, around HR, etc., and AI sitting on top of those. So the headline, I think the market should evolve. And the headline of AI, to me, is, is getting a bit shorter because it's that convergence, 5G, the IoT, the quantum computing, combined with the science, the algorithms, that intelligence, the trusted data, what uh, will um, somehow change the way uh, companies will, uh, will operate. So I was talking about the stream uh, complex uh, on how uh, <coughs> organizations, and again, behind an enterprise, there are hundreds or thousands of enterprises, probably. And probably one of those constraints, uh, and it's not trivial, uh, one of the elements that make that complexity actually is data. Because there's a lot of constraints, dependencies, for any application, for any business solution on the technical data. We need to think about a future enterprise as an exercise <coughs> of a stream simplification, of a stream simplification of the current structures. So how do we see that architecture in the future? This is a very small, uh, very simple picture. Companies from a technical standpoint 
we'll have cloud tech computing layer, we'll have a business data fabric, a trusted, trusted data fabric at the core uh, of the future enterprise. And this is essential for the rest of the talk. Uh, I, will, um, I will explain that concept uh, in more detail. We need to talk about intelligent process. The new data to me is the process itself. People talk to me and tell me, what's matter? what is what matters now? Is it data or is it the algorithms? What is it what matters? I don't know if you have an answer to that. I have an answer. It might not uh, align with your views. To me, it's somehow the concept of ontologies what gives uh, <coughs> what is relevant today. Because an ontology, as I will explain later, later, gives meaning to data, but not only that, it explains the relationship. And we live in a connected world. Relations and networks become more and more important. To me, is the meaning of the data and the relationship of that data what matters. Intelligent process, as I was saying before, that's an opportunity to think companies, as the company, the enterprise of the future, will move from static processes to life processes. The new data to me is the process itself. That's probably the next gen of, of AI, as when you can learn from the experience where process become life. So it's about embedding the reason why these tech giants are so efficient, I said before, they learn by the second. They get smarter by the second. They have AI embedded as the core processes. Processes are not static, but they are uh, life. And then signals and experience. With every interaction, you change the way you interact. The enterprise changes the way they interact. Everything is, as I would say, powered by technoscience and trusted intelligence. Somehow we need to move from building solutions to configuring solutions to come kind of speed up uh, and, and building trust. Trusted intelligence based on trusted data. So we'll see a way to, um, to get into, into that. So <coughs> the trusted or business data fabric for us become a disruption and the reinvention of IT. How do we close the gap? with those digital gigants. As I was saying, they operate in a fundamental different way. They don't split between the operations and the informations. They don't build data lakes, yeah? Which is what we have been doing for data warehouses, data mouse, data lakes, whatever, everything is the same, yeah? We were actually bringing all the inconsistency and the non-trusted data of the operations. We were bringing all that into these lakes, which were nothing else and more uh, than another data silo. They were not solving the problem. So the first way for, you know, how to make kind of all these companies with a lot of legacy system to get smarter, to operate as Google does, the first thing is to, to put a platform on top of that, right? A single uh, data platform where we are able to somehow self-discover all the data. When I said uh, trust the data, uh, you will probably think about quality data, and that will immediately take you to clean data. But trusted data is more than clean data, yeah? Because you need to think about compliance. You need to think about security. You need to think about regulation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I can't tell you that the data lakes that we had in ages were not based on trusted data. So first thing, that platform, yeah? To uh, <coughs> put kind of, to self-discover the data and start first step to start giving meaning to data. Uh, second disruption, and by the way, no need to split to create an informational environment, yeah? Second thing, moving from human-led data management to AI-led uh, data management. Yeah. Data data management cannot be solved by humans. 
full stop. It's just a problem that because of cardinality, more than 10 million columns, more than 50,000 business terms, the matching between the technical dictionaries and the business term can't be managed by humans, full stop. Companies have been trying to do it manually, but reality is that they never catch up. Never that. By the time they get, it might take two years, three years, by the time they finish, the problem is even bigger. So how to get that problem sorted? And we introduce with our partner of strategy, that's the technology that they bring, the technology to create data ontologies. Describe as a, a formal, as the relationship, formal structures, quality rules, and relationships between different structures, yeah? So we can do the matching, the automated matching. We can put an ontology, an attribute, into uh, and, and, and a quality rule kind of into a vector and do uh, the automated matching. Think about any attribute uh, of, uh, I don't know, the address, uh, the balance of an account, etc. Uh, it might not be done 100% by AI, but it will reduce the human effort 50%, 60%, 70%. And the thing is the system will get smarter and smarter. These ontologies will immediately create what we call the business data layer, which is the beginning of what we are saying as the, of what we define as the reinvention of IT as the new age of IT. Because basically what, as I was saying before, one of the reasons why companies are so slow is because there's for any, the constructions, the build out of any application, there's a lot of dependency. The constraints are always on the data model, right? So for a company, it's impossible actually to build a central unit of intelligence. Think about a large bank or you know a large retailer. They can't create like a same or a one thing crime solution, for instance, for everywhere. Why? Because the data model in the UK is different than uh, in, in Germany, the US, Brazil, etc. So they have to create multiple applications. The cost of IT gets multiplied, but as many times as countries, right? Again, one of the reasons why organizations today are so complex are because of that dependency and the constraints on data. This business data layer will decouple somehow the development of any application from <coughs> the, uh, the, the technical and from, the techno from technology and will give business users the possibility to really build uh, AI applications which is at the end of the day the stage where we want to get the full democratization of AI. Because reality is that business are trying to compete against those digital giants in the technology playground, and they are losing and they will lose. The only way to regain, to regain control in the future is to give the business users uh, <coughs> access and control on the technology, because that's where they can't really, that uh, business knowledge is what any business in any industry has and that these technology companies, they don't have. That's what we call IT for business. And again, that speeds up uh, and reduces cost <coughs> of, uh, um, for an, in, in the development kind of, of any, any application. Now, that data ontologies are a disruption because somehow what we are talking about is defining the future data standards, not at an enterprise level, but at the sector level, which become a massive accelerator. So we are at the moment, together with Astrology, defining this business data layer, these ontologies for retailers, for banks, we believe that we have the best open banking solution for health, uh, for the agro business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
And one use case, I think, is what brings things to life, right? As a bank, uh, the development for a global, um, uh, <coughs> global trading platform across 14 countries. What we are talking is moving from 36 months development and a cost of 42 million to a development of eight months and uh, uh, less than eight million. And why is that? Because what before was developed in 14 different countries, 14 different platforms, the cost of maintenance is multiplied by 14. What we are doing that now is building things once in one place and then rolling that out across the rest of the countries. And that business data layer, as I was saying, is what is decoupling and enabling us to do <coughs> that fast. It's a bit like the concept of data, data adapts to the algorithm and not the other way around. So again, that constraint of, uh, of uh, the data, the data structures, we are removing that. And that's why we're saying it's a bit like the, the next age or the revolution. So as I said before, it's about moving from building solutions to configuring solution. The way to hyperescalate, linear growth doesn't cope with disruption. How do you grow in a way that is exponentially? Well, you have to leverage. You have to build artifacts. You have to build components. This is like a Lego. And accelerate by the way you build solutions. You have to, uh, the reusability, the concept of reusability becomes essential. That's what these digital giants do kind of all the time. And everything underpinned by trusted intelligence and trusted data. If we decompose what is a solution, because on the enterprise, I mentioned about these four layers, the cloud tank, the data fabric, the smart processes, and uh, the signals and experience. Across to that, it's all the solutions. And we can say that all any solution will have a component of uh, a data ontology will be based on a uh, be, will be built on a data ontology. We'll have a component of uh, uh, machine learning. We have the business logics, the app, the value. We are bringing trust in every single component of these artifacts. That's why again the combination of techno science and trusted intelligence will become essential to develop the uh, enterprise of the future. Now why, I think I highlighted a bit why this is a game changer. Again, we have a very, very powerful technology now. And we have extremely, we have access to anywhere in the world. I mentioned 200,000 clients, 300,000 uh, people. What we are doing is we are reimagining business. What if? It's like, what if you guys were 50 times more efficient? How would your value chain, what would be your value proposition? How would you change? Let's do that. Let's make it real. We are transforming entire industries. I said, this is not, this is not an enterprise-wide solution. This is a sector. Isn't it right? Right. We are reimagining, we are rebuilding the open banking solution as never before with this technology. And I didn't mention, but we are improving communities. And I know this was the second day of a two days conference, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of use cases. Uh, I selected today a few use cases which are uh, more related with somehow improving communities as well. Because to me, we also have the commitment and the responsibility around supplying tech for good. And I, I think, I think actually I was not competing now just against the donuts, but I was competing again. There was a tech uh, talk about someone from the United Nations. So uh, maybe that's, that's, that's why. <coughs> now, so with this technology uh, and the business knowledge around transformation, how we are helping clients change the status quo. I mentioned we are going to change the way companies use uh, data and AI. We are 
reinventing, we are helping them catch up and, and grow exponentially as the others do. How do we do that? There are four paths, there are four ways. One is, is get the problem on data sorted, yeah? Just get the problem around data governance sorted. It's something I can't tell you. Any CEO, <laughs> any CDO, and everybody will be happy to get that sorted. For the regulators, for the clients, compliance purposes, etc. But it's actually the best, the first step for the rest. Because getting the problem on data right means giving meaning to data, gives uh, means uh, having trusted data, which again is essential, is the basis for uh, the rest. The other thing is, uh, another path is, well, we are not talking about a big bang. Things do not happen in general in life like a big bang, yeah? Actually, if we think about what are the core processes of a company, it's less than 20%. This is where we need to put a focus. This is what matters. These are the processes where we need to embed and to have trusted data, trusted intelligence, and build AI into those processes. Don't get crazy. We don't need to change everything. We need to change that 20%. And that's where the focus is. Uh, I was with a company the other day in New York uh, reinventing the entire agribusiness. It's fascinating, that industry, right? You know, I think. But it's like, well, if you could learn by the second, how would you change your relationship with the farmers, with uh, the providers, uh, with the end users, with the end customers? I mean, you could build the best e-commerce platform. Why not? What we are talking is about actually a competitive advantage. And I can't tell you that the market will use this technology the opportunity window is 24 months. I said before, uh, uh, speed is of essence. Speed is of essence now. Of course, you can stop, you can decide uh, to adopt this in a few years, but that opportunity to have a green field will be gone. And that's actually one of the patterns. Like, same as Google. Google, for instance, right? They they are entering now in the UK in the banking, yeah? With a bank, with a Google account, you can open a Citibank account, right? They are just learning. They are in the process of learning. But, you know, they, anything where they want, they just get it. Like, what if your own business could be in that situation? Because this is what we are talking about. The difference between Human land data management from AI land data management makes a whole difference. And again, this is a competitive advantage now, probably not in five years' time. And, and the other path where we are helping our clients is <coughs> on the entire IT transformation. A company, as I was saying before, they are still using the mainframe, the host, the technology of 50 years. Can we wait for a minute and think, what is, how was the technology 50 years ago? I, well, I still think that it's amazing that they, uh, we could go to the moon. Uh, <coughs> but think about the technology 50 years ago, really. This is what... This is how the clients, how the market is operating now. This is impossible to compete, as I was saying, with the one platform native, yeah? Um, so we are helping somehow to define a roadmap to the progressively decommission from the old technology and bring things into, uh, into that platform. I've taken two... Uh, um <coughs> Two videos, actually, it's one of my colleagues here. I think uh, I know. I meant, I think I saw him. Um, that again, uh, what we are trying is to to have an impact. And I'm sure you probably don't think that EY wouldn't think that EY is doing uh, anything like this. The first use case is about um, preventing on breast cancer. Um, we are <coughs> using actually empowering using the the technology and the platform of Stratio uh, to build uh, 
not just to build a solution and algorithm itself, but to change the entire operation about how radiologists kind of manage kind of this process. Uh, we believe <coughs> that we can, uh, through a pattern and image recognition, we can identify signals of breast cancer two years before what any radiologist can do at the moment. Let me put that video. Breast cancer is one of the main causes of death in women worldwide. Every year, more than 1.7 million women are affected by this pathology. In the developed countries, every woman from 55 to 75 years old has to take one mammography every two years in order to prevent this pathology. In the non-developed countries, the problem is huge because they don't even have radiologists to inform this kind of test. Analyze and improve the image in order to mark the zones with possible injuries, classifying the types, and to have a diagnosis of the images. Identify a digital biomarker by using artificial intelligence where it will allow the prediction of possible occurrences of malignant tumour in mammograms with benignant diagnosis. In the future, the mammography is sent to the new cloud solution, which will analyse and improve the mammography to diagnose the image, also mark the zones with possible injuries, and to facilitate the radiologists, which detect with much more accuracy the types of injuries in the study. It indicates with high precision if these injuries are benign or malignant and marks all the affected areas. Identify a digital biomarker, allowing the prediction, one to two years before, of possible occurrences of malignant tumours in mammograms without any suspicion. Also, this new solution can be used to analyse other medical images, such as dermatology or ophthalmology. Actually, Baltasar is here. So, <laughs> uh, <coughs> so that was the, the first uh, uh, use case. Um, and the second one, and I'll finish with, uh, with this, I'm just conscious of time, um, is uh, one solution that I'm very committed with personally, which is about child protection, uh, which is uh <coughs> about uh, identifying situations of uh, uh, child abuse at early stages. Um, um, so basically, 275 uh, million kids suffer uh, from violence at home. There's a huge problem. We're talking about uh, from an econ also an economic perspective, uh, seven uh, trillion dollars, and about 2,000 kids die every year because of uh, violence. What we are, our child protection solution, is gathering information from multiple sources, from the police, uh, hospitals, uh, the courts, etc. And we are moving <coughs> from a, uh, um, uh, we are moving from an early uh, uh, detection, yeah, um, in action. We are changing the entire cycle, uh, detecting, applying analytics uh, to detect early, sig uh, early signals of violence. We are uh, using geospatial analytics uh, to identify um, uh, situations in boundaries kind of, of different jurisdictions and identify when someone is close to a child and that uh, might be at risk. We are also using network analysis to identify the different relationships uh, <coughs> and, uh, and just to protect. So at the end of the day, we are creating a solution uh, that moves from being reactive uh, to uh, being proactive. This solution has been applied in Australia, in Canada, um, and is now being rolled out uh, in Brazil. And we hope, again, we can have uh, some impact uh, to solve and to save uh, the lives of uh, thousands of kids. So that's all. Thank you very much. I really enjoy uh, being here. It's been a pleasure. A mile from her old place